Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and welcome back to another night with Oxygen Not Included. We're back in the inescapable space prison, cycle 345 and still going strong. Uh, we're working our way towards getting to the point where we can have some space flight, and last time when we were playing, we sort of played a little bit of cleanup on the colony. Um, unfortunately, we missed the stream on Tuesday, uh, so I do apologize for that. I was uh, putting my daughters to bed and kind of fell asleep with her, so we didn't quite make it to the stream on Tuesday night. Uh, but the last time we played, we, uh, we it was really kind of a cleanup stream. Um, we sort of we set up our vacuum tube here so we can travel all the way up to the top relatively quickly. We are going to have to watch out for temperatures, so we're planning to to, uh, to plant some uh, some weasel warts up there to try to manage heat up here because things are a little bit on the spicy side up in this range of things. Well, that regolith is crazy hot. Uh, but we're going to build some stuff up there uh, to try and get our rocket set up going. I think today what I'd like to focus on is starting to get our astronaut training facility arranged. Um, it is going to require us to promote some duplicates into positions where uh, their stress might become a bit of an issue. And actually, you should cancel this. I think we've got enough water flow in the pipe there now. It should have uh, should have adjusted the temperatures for us, I think. Double check those. Yeah, these pipes are all looking just the right temperature now, so that'll be good. Uh... So, we need to make sure that we have a decent amount of morale production in order to, to have our duplicates set up to be in the, the astronaut program. Now, right now, we're only trending around 20, in some cases as high as 24, for duplicates that are in the colony at the moment. When we look at the jobs board, though, and we check out the people up in the astronaut space cadet section of things, I mean, they need a 25 just to be a space cadet, and 30 if they want to actually be an astronaut in full. That's kind of a lot. Uh, a lot of that actually comes from the food because your maximum food morale is like 16. So we're gonna have to kind of work on maybe figuring out how we can get some food production that's gonna be set up specifically for those high-end duplicates where they get the rarefied food that's actually gonna give them the right kind of stress benefit. Um, and then also maybe we can do something more with, I mean, we have a little bit of stuff going on here in our relaxation space, but maybe we should look at relocating our massage table somewhere else since we rarely use them anyway. Maybe we'll lower them down a floor. We'll make our break room a little bit bigger so we can fit in an arcade, get an extra boost again, uh, and see what we can do kind of that way. Uh, and we may even need to actually increase break times a little bit for people who are on the astronaut program so we make sure they're getting the, the use out of the, of the items that are actually in the, uh, in the break area. So we'll kind of see how all that goes, but uh, hopefully everything will go well. Welcome everyone who's here so far in the chat, and if you're watching this on the, the, uh, the channel afterwards, welcome. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Sam. Evil Fox Worshipper to be astronaut. Uh-oh. Evil Fox Worship Bear. I don't even know if he's got the right job set. So we'll have to check. Uh, in order to be a space cadet, uh, they first have to be a scientist. So they have to be a tenured scientist. We have a couple people here that have been trained, uh, but they also have to be an exosuit engineer. So there's kind of a lot going on there. Voltron, we know, was a scientist. But I don't remember what level we actually had Voltron up to. So we're going to check Voltron over here. Voltron got at least that high. And did not max out here. So we'll have Voltron over here to max this out. So once they get to 100% here, they'll be able to move into the space program. Uh, let's check out where Evil Fox Worship is. There, we have them at Electrical Engineer right now. And I don't know if they were ever, ever an Exosuit Engineer. So let's check uh, Evil Fox Worshipper. I don't think so. I think we've only, had, we've only had a few. So can we get Evil Fox Worshipper in here? Nope, we've got to start him all the way at the bottom of the chain. So it's going to take a little bit to get him up to the astronaut program. But that's kind of okay anyway, because we really have a lot of building to do. Like, even though I'm starting to get this stuff set up, there's we're not even going to be close to sending a duplicate into space in this particular stream, because we haven't built a rocket. We don't have all the materials. We don't have a launch base set up. We don't have anybody who's gone through astronaut training. We haven't done research. There's kind of a lot to go there. Oh, and actually, I should check, uh, check the research tree, because they did alter their research points a little bit now. Um, so jetpacks are something we can research that I did not have them working on, so we should get that that covered off so we can make those. We do have petroleum around, and it's a petroleum that's used to fuel the jetpacks. Those will be very helpful when it comes to the point of actually building our little space station thing, because they can fly around and do all the back walls and stuff. Uh, so that'll be good. Ah, see how that all goes over. It's been nice for me to actually make being slammed at work. Oh, welcome, glad you were able to make it, Doc Mopar. You're from the Hamlet stream. Hi, Toaster Bread. Ah, Hamlet. I'm really enjoying that. Again, I, I, I seem to get addicted to games, and I, I play them in like crazy amounts at a time, but the thing with uh, the thing with Hamlet is it's only available for such a short amount of time. Actually, let's cancel that. Um, I need... No, I will have to destroy all these. 
deconstruct these. We're gonna we're gonna move our uh, massage tables down because uh, we do have them in a relaxation room right now. But as it stands, I want to make this room bigger, so we'll have to pull those out of there. Uh, these are finally coming back to a temperature where they're growing properly. So we still have a body temperature problem here. What is the body temperature here? Uh, these are currently at. It needs to be between 5 and 30. What temperature is this thing? Liquid pipe's at 11.2. Oxygen is at 29.1. I mean, I feel like these bristle blossoms should be growing. I don't see how they have a temperature problem anymore. But we'll see how that pans out. Hey, I love this game. Me too. I play a lot of it. Petition to build a fox warship to ship wars. <laughs> uh, why? Evil fox worshipper. All right, you only last twenty days in Hamlet. Yeah, it's. I mean, it takes a little bit, of, a little bit of practice and stuff. I'm uh, the game that I'm playing right now that I've been doing some recording with. I think I'm on day thirty-five, thirty-four, thirty-five, something like that. So I kind of got a few things figured out and managed to survive and not pick up, pick a fight with something that was a bit too big for me for once. Okay, let's get these guys set up with a little door down here, because we just don't have to make this a proper space, otherwise. There's gonna be just enough room in there for the uh, for the massage tables. I wonder if I should just get rid of this and we'll do it. Eh, eh whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's take it. I can get rid of this and just do a statue, and move the door over one. But I guess in the end, it doesn't matter. It's gonna it's gonna even out to the same thing ultimately anyway. Uh, furniture. Throw some pictures in here. Oh, uh, where's the massage tables? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I think the massage is maybe in medicine now. Yeah, there they are. All right, double massage table for when those duplicates really want to have a couple's massage. We got them covered. I mean, they hardly use them anyway. Oh, actually, wow, our stress is at fifty-one percent. Why is that? What is going on with Rangi? Oops! Oh, I had him. No, we gotta make me flip all the way through. I wish there was a way to just. There we go. Rangi, what's your deal? Grimy, soggy feet, low morale. I guess he's engineer 95%. Oh, you know what? He's probably got an issue where he's not producing enough morale. Uh, where's Rangi? Where are you? I wish these were in alphabetical order. All right. Yeah. He needs a morale rating of 20, and he's only running a morale rating of, like, 15. Uh, funny enough, I see a bunch of them have the soggy feet. But I'm not sure where they're getting their feet wet. I need to figure out where there's a, a spill here somewhere. Somewhere we've slopped water, and they're running around in it, and they really shouldn't be. Uh, because they do have exosuits they can take off in and stuff. Sam A, $2 super chat. Immunity drop, 84 to 79 during this stream. Uh, that would be more cowbell. What's more cowbell up to? Let's, uh, let's follow him for a minute. Let's see where he's going. Oh, he's taking a shower. Sorry, everybody cover your eyes. You're not. We're not supposed to watch them in the shower. That's supposed to be private time. What area did I have them working in that might... Oh, well, okay. Well, he's going to go to sleep. Uh, I might have had them out here or something. You know what? Or, or up here? Cannot remember where we had more Calbo going. The germs might have been an issue. Uh, down here, not so much. It's all just cold. See? Oh, stuff breaking down here again. What do we got going on here? Right here, liquid pipe. The, pipe. the liquid's staying in the pipe a little bit too long, I think. What's the temperature here? Minus 14. Maybe I need to adjust the temperature sensor on this thing. Uh, this is set to go until it's minus 20, but maybe we'll just set it for minus 10. So it's above... Oops, no. It's above minus 10. Jeez. Actually, no. Minus 20 is better. Because if it's above minus 20, we want it to turn on. If it's below minus 20, I want it to turn off. Did I set that right? <laughs> It's on. What temperature is this thing? Minus 11. All right. No. I did I did make the adjustment right. Above minus 10. There we go. That should turn it off. Now, it's going it, to... It takes a little bit even after it turns off, unfortunately, because... Oh, this is taking cool damage, too. Uh, because there'll still be gas in the pipe or whatever, but that'll be all right. I have a feeling these pipes are going to wind up breaking on me. But we shall see. Dixon's suit dock at the top is disabled, is it? 
Oh, you're right. We turned that off because... Oh, yeah. They're all running out there and all kinds of nastiness. Uh, enable building. Where's our oxygen flow into this thing? Ooh, non-existent. What's going on there? Huh. It's never backing up enough for it to actually extend past there. Oh, boy. Tiny little dribbles going past. I actually thought this vent was going to back up more frequently than this. Uh, this isn't really producing what I want. So 500 grams per second. There's only 1,000 grams per tile, but it is consistently getting the oxygen out into the colony. And that's... I mean, it's good from an oxygen perspective, I guess. I mean, our oxygen is looking pretty good. Uh, what if I disable this vent? No, oh, actually, I disabled this one. Right, let's deconstruct that vent. I'm going to leave that one for now, and we'll see. I think it's probably fine with the other oxygen inputs. I think we were already hitting a good oxygen level. So if I can have them deconstruct this thing. There we go. If they go deconstruct that. Oh, what did I tell them to deconstruct otherwise? Maybe I didn't click on anything. We'll get the oxygen to flow past. We'll feed the suits as a priority instead of feeding the colony. Uh, because I think their oxygen level is going to be fine. TRD Taco, Donald 99 Super Chat. Thursday Oni Stream, awesome. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate the support. Welcome to the stream. Uh, it, there is a the, the question of where we're going to build our duplicate training center. Because we're gonna, it's got to be someplace we can supply with oxygen. It needs to be someplace that we can manage the temperature in, I guess, as well. Uh, and space is getting to be a bit of a challenge. I mean, we've spread it into a few different biomes here. This one's just a hot mess. I thought we got rid of all this oil. How did we not get rid of that oil yet? That's set for crude oil. Is the door unlocked? The door's open. Apparently, just nobody's choosing to dump it out. Maybe because of the priority setting. I don't know. I have a... Well, when they open this door, we're going to get a little flood of water that goes down here, too, which is probably not going to be great. Uh, what are you going to do? Crazy Sammy, did you miss Tuesday stream? Welcome back. Uh, you didn't miss Tuesday stream. I missed Tuesday stream. <laughs> I fell asleep putting my daughter to bed. Nah, things kind of went from there. Maybe at 74% starts making vitamin chews. Uh, you no, know, I mean, I'm not super worried about it. We have hospital beds and stuff. I mean, even if they do get sick, everyone else is up like 90s, 96 to 100. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we did enable the exosuit dock at the top here. Uh, it's kind of gradually getting filled up with oxygen. It's going to take a little while, uh, but that at least will get them. When they're out here, they won't be out in that, uh, the nasty germy stuff, I guess. <laughs> I am group with the $5 super chat. They took our jabs. They took our jabs. All right. So astronaut space training center. Where can we have this thing? Ooh, and actually, while I'm thinking of it, I know, it, I'm like a squirrel. I keep thinking of something else. I've always got something going on. Um, I have one other of these things, that, one other wheeze ward I need to dig up. And I can't remember whether I told them to dig one yet. Is that one? I guess they can get this one here. Just in case. Oh, I don't want the... Don't worry about the abyssal light. We just want that. Uh, we're also going to have to produce a whole bunch of steel. Now, we had uh, we had been using the metal refinery here to produce steel, but it's uh, it's overheating really well. Like, uh, like really well. <laughs> uh, up here, we're using this as a system to cool our water as it comes through. Water at 0.7 degrees. So the water is coming out of here actually quite frigid now. By the time it gets down here, which, which one's the water flow pipe? I think it's this top one. By the time it gets down here, it's at 1.3 degrees. Two degrees by the time it gets out here. Fourteen degrees. Man, it warms up quite a bit coming through here. In the end, it ends up like right in that right in that prime territory for temperature anyway. Do the dupes eat each other? Nope, not that I'm aware of. It's gotten distracted where we're gonna project eight times. That's me. Boop squirrel. Okay, so I'm thinking up here maybe is a is a good place to build our astronaut space center. Uh, it will require something to bypass this whole primary power grid that we have running through the middle here. I'm thinking like if they come up on this side and go into it, that will work. I don't really need a ton of space, but I'm going to try to make something something different up here, I guess. See how that goes. Uh, we have this built so I can deconstruct the stuff that's in here. Let's get our recreation center going. 
Uh, and then hopefully uh, this room's not going to be too big. Just got to double check that. Nightbot's trying to be funny. <laughs> it's all the commands that Drinking programmed in there for uh, all the funny little distractions I get. Oh, the room's too big now. Ah, man, 68 tiles, and it has to be a maximum of 64, I think. 64, all right. So it, it does need to move in, like, one row. That's so lame. Maybe, uh, you know what, we'll just go like this. Just block off four tiles in there, it'll be fine. Okay, get rid of the statue. Okay, this is where we're going to put our arcade system. Um, this room, oddly enough, doesn't really have the best decor either, just because the way stuff is positioned. I don't think I can put pictures or statues or anything in here because these uh, these recreational items, they don't sit squarely on a tile. They go in between tiles. And the uh, the Jukebot is a uh, big dancing machine, so it like pops up high and it blocks, you can't build above it. So it kind of makes it a little weird for decor. Let's get an arcade machine in here. Uh, here we go, here's the arcade cabinet. I think I'll put it towards this side so I can maybe fit in another picture, because I don't think I can... No, I can't build pictures above it. Uh, but I can build a statue next to it. Uh, on the left... Ooh, maybe not. We'll see. Might be able to fit one on the left side. Yeah. Power is going to be an issue, though. Can you check with the above right base? It's unexplored. Above right. I was hanging up here without a sweater or anything on. I'm going to get cold. Wait, above right base. Which one are you talking about? Not sure what you mean. This one's just a little office. That one's got the stuff there. I don't see what you mean. Are you talking about this one up here? With the switches? And it's full of... looks like it's full of oil. Oh, no. It's actually just shadowed out because uh, nobody's been in there yet. It's got, like, the fog of war thing going on. I'm not sure what you mean by above right. Make the entire floor airflow vents for painting... Uh, paintings beneath to pass it through to help. Well, the thing is, it, you, you get like a funny effect, right? Because if you look at the, the airflow tiles, they have a decor rating of minus 4.5. So you end up eroding your decor by a little bit. I mean, I guess it, we would get some effect, some, some beneficial effect out of that. But it does, it does have a negative decor effect when you have the tiles. Which actually means I probably shouldn't have these, <laughs> these airflow tiles up here because they're not really serving a purpose either. Just negatively impacted the decor for no reason at all with those ones. Uh, what was this pipe about? Oh yeah, that was the oxygen supply. That was the one I, uh, I rerouted. Completely forgot about that. Short-term memory. What's my name again? Man, look how full this thing is. Alright, we have two wheeze warts up here. Temperatures are hot. Dang hot. Super hot. It's polluted germs up here, too. Man. These things are basically just going to try to, like, tread water on the temperature up here so we don't totally melt things down. I need to figure out how the jetpacks work. Like, if they're going to... If they're going to swap out of the existing suit if I have a jetpack system up here. So if they come up with an exosuit, well, they drop the exosuit to get in the jetpack. I have a feeling they won't. So I'm a little concerned about that. Um, hopefully they will, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I think I'm going to try and put some jetpacks up here. Um, but then we have all of our petroleum currently is way down here. Where it's not super useful. And there's kind of a network of pipes already in here. Sort of preventing us a little bit from piping things up easily. I'll have to see how that goes. Snoops, $2 super chat. Caleb for astronaut. And night, lol. Uh, Alright, Snoops. Have a good night. <laughs> do you have an obsession with airflow tiles i see a lot of it uh yeah well i use airflow tiles specifically to keep air movement strong in the colony so you don't if you if you have uh if you have too many choke points in terms of the air movement in your colony you can't get this kind of even light blue color over everything because there'll be something that stops it from passing from one area to another so i use airflow tiles on the floors to allow co2 to go downward and I use the tiles on the, the walls and stuff to allow the oxygen to move left and right and up and down to try to get an even distribution of oxygen. I put us with a 5 euro super chat. When you get the rocket building, can you name it SS Warship to ship wars? Uh, I mean, I, I guess so. We'll see if we can actually get a name that's that long. 
Okay. This thing takes 1,200 for the arcade cabinet. That's that's a nuisance. I'm going to need some refined metal. And a lot more power. <laughs> I don't think I'm producing enough power. All right. Uh, if we look in here, we should have the full-sized power transformer. So we'll drop one of those there. And then we're going to need some conductive wire. We'll make this out of iron, because we have a ton of that right now. Send this down through here. Connect it into that. Uh, and then we can actually deconstruct the wires that are here so we can recover some metal. Get that stuff back. So that'll have its own dedicated power supply. Uh, and then it'll just be a question of whether we're producing enough power to even operate that thing. Right above the base is in directly above the base, as in 12 o'clock from the base. Well, I'm above the base at 12 o'clock, and I don't necessarily... I mean, there might be a ruin in here? It's hard to tell, because it's all blacked out, because nobody's explored that yet. I don't know. Unless it's way, way up there you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about this one here, I mean... It, we have to get a duplicate up there first. Oh, what am I going to do below this water? If I want to make a space in here, I'm going to have to have to get rid of that water. Hey, gooder boys, gooder. Glad you enjoy the streams. Welcome. Thoughts on petroleum now burning in a 3 to 1 ratio with oxygen for petroleum engines? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I haven't really experimented with the engines too much. I played around with them a little bit in debug mode when it first came out, and I haven't done much else since. I'm just happy we're getting these things now. Okay, so let's check our... Hold on. Check our consumables. I don't want everybody eating the best food. Sorry, duplicates. It's just how it is. You have to suffer. So I don't want... I don't want anyone eating these things. Uh, stuffed berries give 12. Pepper bread. Okay, so it's only the high, the duplicates that we have, the high-end jobs that we want consuming the good food. So we'll put Rangi on that one. Who else do we have at a higher consumption? Or sorry, Voltron and, Voltron and Rangi we'll put on these because, I mean, they can eat the lower ones, but they'll prioritize the higher ones, so that's okay. Uh, they have a high job requirement. I think that's it. Oh, some are Phillips, too, actually. We're trying to keep them on the good food. So when we produce it, we'll limit the exposure to other duplicates to eat it. Stuffed berries. It's funny they don't. It's funny they have the stuffed berry at the end instead of in the middle. I feel like they should be ordered in terms of the, the food quality. Pepper red. We have 306 units of sleepy grain. And we have lots of units of pinch of pepper nut. So let's make a bunch of these. So that'll be good. That's plus five, which will give them a plus 16 to their morale when they eat that, which will be great. Use the hydrogen at the top to make power. Um, a lot of times there's, like, this hydrogen in here, uh, it is in relatively high concentration. But I'd have to pump it out to somewhere to actually make use of it. I do have a generator over here, but I uh, haven't had a pump connected to it in a while. I think if, actually, if, uh, what, how's my, how's my gas set up here? I could probably reroute this. And then we'll let the hydrogen in here. But the trouble is this is all full of oxygen right now. So let's um let's maybe deconstruct this tile. We'll let the hydrogen from this top level drain up into this space. Open this too. Since we're not using this little room to produce oxygen for the for the suits right now anyway. Uh, we can let the hydrogen go in there, and hopefully it'll kind of pool up enough that we can pump it out, generate a small amount of power. It's not going to give us a lot, though. We'll burn it relatively quickly, and then it'll be gone. Uh, Varsity, this is a family-friendly chat. Just keep that kind of stuff out of it, please. I want bread that tastes like toast. <laughs> 
You sing, singing out song lyrics in chat now, Live Epically? Just a little patience. Got steam over here. Uh, temperature here is 57, 58 degrees, and this side it's 57, 58. These wheeze warts are not going to be able to keep up. There's only two of them. And this is all an uncontrolled space. I wonder if I should block this off and make it so the only access in here is going to be through through the tube system. Deconstruct, deconstruct the ladder here for now. And I'll, tr I'll try to set it up so we have this kind of block with, blocked in with insulation a little bit. The tricky part is going to be this one right here. I'm going to have to like... Uh, I'll have to break out the tube that's here and actually put it into like one of the tubes that goes through material. <laughs> I think I got a little stuck. They're all gonna be stuck up for a minute. They're sucking up all the power. The dupes are playing with the arcade, are they? Let's go look. Ah, uh, too slow. That stream delay. Didn't realize it was a stream at first until I got confused of what was going on. Oh yeah, Apex, it's a stream. <laughs> but welcome. Thanks for popping in. No, you were singing it. That's your bass. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did sing that actually on uh, on Smule the other day. Oh, actually, I guess it might have been a couple weeks ago now. Not my finest performance. My voice cracked a little bit in there, but it's like a classic from my childhood. Okay, so now I've effectively trapped you guys. This is getting no power because I broke the wire. They can get in there, but they can't get out. <laughs> Sorry, duplicates. You guys are going to want to get on that as a priority because uh, this this is kind of important right here. You guys need a way to get out. Can they even reach it? They have no materials. That's great. Uh, let's just set a priority nine on that. Wait a minute. How are some of them up here without a spacesuit on? This is enabled. Oh, I gave them a way to... Oh. All right. That was foolish of me. I gave them a way to get around the... Uh, to get around the suits. My bad. <laughs> Whoops. Varsity, please... If you're just here to troll, then please go somewhere else. Or I'm going to put you on a timeout. Uh, I need those duplicates to hurry up and fix that wiring. <laughs> They're sleeping up here. <laughs> oh, it's so hot. They have no food. Some of them don't have oxygen. This is not going to go well. All right. Let's just, uh, let's just bite the bullet and we'll have them destroy these so they can take the ladder down. All right. Go take the ladder down. Stop sleeping up there. Let's fix that wire. <laughs> Never seen this game before, but looks interesting. Yeah, this is a good game. It's one of my favorites, actually. This game, basically, you start off with uh, three little duplicates in your colony. We're up to 18 right now, but you start off with three inside this asteroid. Um, none of this is built, and you have to kind of, like, dig your way around and build a whole base that you can kind of get everything set up. Um, and create a system that they can survive. So you're producing food and oxygen and places for them to live, and you have to try to manage their morale and keep them happy and stuff so they can do different jobs and... Uh, keep them from getting too many germs and getting sick and dying and stuff. It's actually, it gets really complicated. It started off relatively simple. Um, not easy, but simple. And over time, they've added a lot of complexity to the game. Who almost died? Uh, nobody. They were fine. I, I, I mean, they, uh, they had polluted oxygen up here, so technically they could breathe, but... A little more cowbell is still getting sick. Where is more cowbell? That's Caleb. Oh, I hate how you have to flip through that. I, I wish I could just click on the name. There we go. Uh, where are you? Follow cam? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's gonna make you dizzy watching that too close. 
Run, buddy, run. I mean, he's putting on an exosuit when he goes out in the environment. I don't know why he's getting sick. It's got to be something on the on the right-hand side of things, because I don't have exosuits over here. Oh, yeah, it's a little germy over here. Uh, I mean, nobody's actually going in this space, so maybe what I'll do is I'll wall this off to try to contain some germs. I'll wall that off. Uh, I can't do anything to, for this one, because we're actually... Theoretically draining liquid there. Do I have it draining somewhere else? I think I have it dumping out over here somewhere, right? Maybe not. Oh my gosh. Where was I dumping that stuff? I thought I had polluted water going somewhere else. Uh, Alright, maybe not. I guess it's just that one spot. Not that there's that many things being dumped in there, but... It's got to be from coming over here. So let's uh, let's set it up so Calvo can't go out this door. Where's more cowbell? There we go. You can stay inside so you don't get all germy. Uh, that will stop him there. There's no access point up here, so that should be fine. I think that will keep him from getting any more, any more illness. Down here, there's no airborne germs, so that's fine. And then over here, if they go out, they're actually using an exosuit. So that shouldn't get them sick there either. So I think it'll be fine. Should be good. Demolish the tube section you're going to replace. So the tube's kind of... Oh, yeah. Um, this one here. We're going to deconstruct that. And then we're going to replace it with the, uh, the transit tube crossing instead. Try to keep this one little room up here isolated so that the Weasel Warts might have a better chance of cooling it a little bit. <laughs> now you're stuck again, but at least you got... <laughs> oh. All right. Good job. You uh, you made a delivery and trapped yourself up there, too. Let's, uh, let's maybe work on prioritizing this. <laughs> hey, Alejandro. Glad you enjoyed the stream. Welcome. Yeah, it's probably just a board kid. It's not a big deal, really. Trolls are the nature of streaming, and he's tame by comparison to some of the ones I've seen. All right, you guys are trapped again. Let's deconstruct this thing. Oh, now they... <laughs> now you build it. All right, good job. <laughs> Fabulous work. Okay, so in here is actually where I want to have our fancy... Fancy jetpack suits. Uh, so we're going to plan to build out an insulated floor in here. Uh, preferably one that's a little less derpy. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be able to insulate all this in because I can't reach any of it. Um, but hopefully... Oh my gosh, I can't even... I can't even draw. Ew, can you even draw, brah? Make something up there to produce oxygen. Well, they're going up there in spacesuits, so they really shouldn't need oxygen up there. Just do it with a $2 super chat. Asteroid has more holes than a <laughs> horse treasure's mule. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> We're working on it. They're drilling all kinds of stuff out here. Yeah, see, everyone that gets up here should have a suit, so we don't actually need to produce oxygen up here. Hooray! All right, you guys are done there. We just have to get all this done. They've got that dug out. Things are warm and spicy in here. I don't think they can even dig that, but we'll see. I might actually have to give them a ladder to get topside here so they can finish all the stuff up above. Maybe we'll, get them, we'll give them a ladder like up, up right here. They can dig that out. We'll get out some of this algae and stuff, and they can build in the insulation on the roof here, too. Jess Stewart, two dollars super chat. Sorry, that was funnier in my head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't get it, but I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> Snoop's going tonight. <laughs> Have a good night, Snoop's. All right, more insulation. This all. Oh, I don't need this. Get rid of that. Just dig it out. Excellent. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, now we can get up topside, and then let me dig all this out. I think, like, up here, I think is going to be where I'll put my rocket system. Um, I was going to put it, like, right here, but if I have the, the suits directly underneath where the rocket takes off, the fire that comes out of the bottom end of it will just melt everything, and that's probably not going to be ideal, I'd say. <laughs> it's my logic. You're trapped. Might as well work. You got it. I think using an auto digger could save dupe time. Maybe a little bit. Um, if you're just digging out like a like a raw square area, where I'm where I'm more interested in the auto digger is up here, where the regolith keeps piling up. Because once you've dug out an area, so like down here, uh, when I was testing it out, I put an auto digger right here. So it dug out this this whole square area that it it's it's able to reach, and got rid of all the pieces that were in it. But then it's a it's a completely no use anymore. You have to like break it down and just take it somewhere else. So you end up running wiring for it instead, and then you have to build the actual machine itself, and so there's a whole bunch of infrastructure you have to set up, I guess. And I don't know that it necessarily saves a lot of time. You also can't alter the size of what this this is going to be digging in. It just it's automatically going to be this. So you kind of have to have an idea of where you want it placed before you use it to any great extent. I think really where it's going to be most helpful is with uh, handling regolith. That's my take on it anyway. Go. Uh, let's actually deconstruct this too. Open an insulated tile in there. Get to work, my little dupes. We, wanna, we need jetpacks. So we have lots of raw material to work with. So it, let's. Uh, if we look in stations, the jetpack station is hiding somewhere. Ooh, I don't have any research yet. Wait a minute. Is my research turned off? I bet you it is, because I'm super smart that way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got my uh, supercomputer turned off. I was saving heat. Uh, enable building. There we go. Got that finished. Why is the stuff at the upper left of the screen taking damage? Uh, there's a ladder hidden underneath there that took a bunch of heat damage. So this right here, all this regolith, I had dug a hole all the way up to outer space. And through comets falling on the surface, it's piled up this much regolith on top of the hole that I made. So underneath all of this, there's a ladder that's taken uh, taken heat damage, and the, the top here has just gotten kind of smashed. Ooh, there's a base in here. That's the base we want to get to up there. Oh man, I gotta be careful. Actually, if I build my rocket setup right here, I gotta make sure it doesn't like take out part of. There's a geyser here, in front of the door to get into the. the oh man. <laughs> all right, hold on. Let's get a ladder up here. There we go. Or is this the base you were talking about being like straight above? Like this is the one you want me to check out? You breathe in space. That's new. That's a that's definitely a skill. Just teach the astronauts that one. Okay, so I guess I am gonna have to build my rocket launching spot like right here because I I have to avoid this geyser. Uh, unless I make it on on this side. So everybody drops into here, gets a suit, goes up and goes across a corridor corridor or whatever, and then we can have it over here. But now I've got a geyser here I've got to worry about too. Can't win for trying, I don't think. That's a lot of polluted oxygen in there. We went through a lot of water here already. This was filled up a little bit higher than this before. Need these things to erupt again. Um, this is dormant. Requires analysis, so I don't know when that one's going to be active again, but this one is dormant also, which is to explain why our water level is going down. It's not going to erupt for another 7.9 cycles, so that's actually not that bad. You sure that's a geyser, not a volcano? This one up here? Oh, this one's a volcano, yeah, sorry. I drew out the, the size of it, and it is a volcano. All right. Let's get priority six. I want them to build all this stuff up here. Relatively quickly. Relatively quickly, anyway. Should have them chop up the directos for dinner, too. Just worry about it and everything, <laughs> everything and nothing at the same time. It'll be easier to build. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know what it is in this game? Like I'm constantly thinking like all the different things that I want them to do at the same time. 
and I'm horrible at sitting and waiting for them for to actually do it. Probably part of it is because I'm actually I'm actively streaming it. So whenever I'm just sitting and waiting for something to happen, it always feels like it's maybe not as interesting. So consequently, I tend to give them too many jobs at once. <laughs> the poor guys. I wanted to expose the blackout part of the map there. Oh, I see. This part in here. Yeah, we'll have to get into it. Um, I don't really have anyone that's even all that close to it. Maybe once we dig our way up here, because again, I, I kind of want to do my my space stuff up here, but I'm, I'm going to figure out what to do with all the polluted water that's in here. We could just bottle it, I guess, and dump it down bottom. They could transport it that way. Alternatively, I could pump it out of there if I want to go through all the trouble of trying to work everything past all of this. You know, maybe I'll... I'm going to plan for some infrastructure here. We'll get some stuff laid out ahead of time. We're going to throw in some insulated pipe down here. Uh, yeah, down to here. Oops. Derpy pipes. Alright, so we'll plan to connect into this feed so we can pump the water from up top down there, and that's where we can kind of recycle it from. And then up here... Now the trouble is going to be I don't have exosuits set up on this side of things. Maybe I should have the duplicates access it through here to do the construction and then afterwards like, I'll make this the access point from this side so that way they can work while they're in the exosuits where's Polani? Uh, I don't know I think she was on vacation or something I haven't seen her in probably a week or so if you're building a ladder up to the volcano do you want to be to cancel the tiles around it oh yeah yeah I don't really want them to build it uh, these tiles on this side we can cancel out I just want to remember it's there is all. All right, we have a little bit of hydrogen in here. We can pump this out if I redirect our ventilation system. We send it out through here. We can reconnect it to here. Anyway, where's the rest of my... Uh, and this pipe needs to be disconnected. Then we can pump the hydrogen out of here and just send it into our little generator over there. It's going to give us like a small boost of extra power, but more than anything, I said, it'll just kind of strip down some of the hydrogen, even though there's still more of it trapped here that it can't get all the way over there. Let's see what happens. We'll get what we can anyway. Want to go for the right side of the four coal generators? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably a good idea. That makes sense. We can dig in from here. If I actually, if I send them in right, right here, uh, hold on. My only concern is they're gonna, they're gonna carry the slime all the way through the base, but it's actually not that big of a deal, I guess. Throw a ladder down into here because can never have enough ladders. Um, now the piping that I'm setting up is over here, so they're actually gonna have to dig. On this side of things also, so I have a way to get the pipe out. There we go. So now I can actually, I can set the pipe up in here. We'll run it through this space, down through the ladder. Connect it up there. And then in here we'll need a little bit of plumbing. I'll get most of it, and then we can just kind of mop up the remainder. Uh, we probably should plan ahead and get rid of the water that's up top, too, I guess. Actually, if I just have them walk through here, I don't even have to have them build as much. There we go. Build a ladder up here. We can tap into that water. We got to pull like, a nice collection of gold and stuff here, too, while we're at it. All right, see you in a bit, Fortnite Trader. How do you go into debug mode? Uh, you hit the backspace key, and then there's some some different commands once you do it. I don't want to do it in here because it'll set the whole game on debug mode until I log out of the game entirely and reload it. 
Uh, we just hit backspace, and then there's a number of different commands you can use to set like automatic building and stuff. Uh, I think there's like a there's a, a text file you have to update to beforehand. Um, there's a if you do a search for um, oxygen not included debug mode, you should find some forum posts on the Clay forum. They've got uh, detailed instructions there on how you can set it all up and then use it. So much pre-planning. Well, yeah, there is kind of a lot of it in this game, right? I mean, th that being said, I, usually what I do is I, I have this stuff down here relatively pre-planned. Uh, this is really densely packed. Um, and then after that, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants. As I decide I want to build something, I kind of figure out where I'm going to put it and then try to plan that out. But it usually ends up a little, a little bit chaotic. My calling never is all that organized after the fact. Uh, I have a lot of food here. Uh, bristleberries we have... Fair amount of pepper bread. Mushrooms we have, but we're not cooking any mushrooms, so I probably should set this up to make some mushrooms. Uh, and actually, we're out of stuff for pepper bread. We just went through all the sleep wheat grains, so we can make this too. There's only three of them eating the sleep wheat bread right now, so that's like 38 ch pieces of that should last them, you know, like 12 days or whatever. No, more than that, actually. Well, just over 12 days. What the? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> they went out of the pipe and then backed up. <laughs> Those are some hard breaks they got there. What dupes have I got at the moment? Uh, we have 18 of them, so let's uh, let's take a look in here. Now we have Voltron, Rangi, Caleb, Live Epically, Brosif, Lucas Souza, Brian the Golden Freddy, Sarah Beep, Ari Luco, Carter Clark, More Cowbell, Brittany Sloan White, BDS Empire, Evil Fox Worshipper, Sibylline, Dulfin, M Mo A, and Summer Phillips. We did have a, another colony that we had started uh, while we were waiting for um, the space industry upgrade to make it into the, the core part of the game because the lag in here got so bad I couldn't even play it. Uh, so that one I obviously had a different set of duplicates in it, but this one's a little different now. You have a 17 meat. You should make dupe oh, do we have 17 meat? Ooh, we do. We got all kinds of meat. Let's make some barbecue. Uh, all right. The thing is, um, we have a select group of duplicates eating the high-end food, so I just got to be a little bit careful of it. Because the rest of the duplicates are eating the lower-end food. And if we look at here and has, say we have like a ton of kilocalories, but it's all food that the other people don't have access to, like pepper bread. Bristleberries aren't edible directly. They need to be cooked into something. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, where's our consumables? Who do I have set on barbecue? Did I limit barbecue at all? Yeah, I did. Okay. 64%. More cattle is still getting sick. Our stress went back down to zero, so everybody got everybody got into the right range for their uh, their morale requirement. And that was really just a function of the food. We were like 38 days. One pepper bread has 4,000. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. I guess it does. Yeah, we got tons of food then. Score. Wait, is that a death? Nope, nobody died. Somebody uh, mastered their job. Uh, all right, evil fox worshiper can move up now. There we go. Uh, we don't want to. We want to move up. We should move up Ari Luco and Sibylline, so we can get them skilled up. And then we're gonna look at Rangi. I think already has research, but Summer Phillips. Does not. So we'll move Summer down there so she can start to learn some research too. We're going to get a couple people that we can have set up as astronauts. Poorly designed base. Uh, sure, Tango Crunch. I mean, it, it works fine in, in uh, initially, but anyway, like I said, as I go, I just kind of go by the seat of my pants and just build things on it afterwards. It's all been working well for me, though. There's no one right way to do this game. I mean, that's just it. What the... Uh, did this thing erupt? Why are you scalding? Oh, these doors need to be closed. Nobody go in there anymore. Same thing with this door. I think the volcano erupted. Yeah, we got steam in there now. 114 degrees. Ay. And that's producing a bunch of water, which is... Falling right in our reservoir. Sweet. <laughs> well, that worked out well. Unintentionally. That's a lot of steam in there, though. Okay, I guess we hit the uh, non-dormant period on this volcano. Next dormancy in 50 cycles. 
So this is going to start to collect gold. Oh, the gold's already backing up. Why are you not working? What are these set at? Oh, party five, that's why. Set these at party six. We'll store the gold down here. And now we've got a source of refined gold. It's going to take a while for that to cool down, though. Things are a little... A little bit on the warm side. Hopefully this doesn't melt up here. Oh, it's already taking damage. Oh, that's so bad. It's a conveyor loader made out of iron. Conveyor loader can't be made out of refined metals, so unfortunately it's not going to be able to handle the heat down there. It's too hot. Well, we'll get some gold out of it in the meantime. At some point, we're not going to be able to anymore because nothing's going to break. Get what we can. Oh, yes, yeah, Caleb astronaut. Uh, where is the jobs here? Where is Caleb anyway? I don't even know in this whole big mess of people. What do we have you doing right now? Oh, there you are. You're an electrical engineer. All right, so we'll start you back on research. I don't know how well they're going to advance through the research, though, considering they don't have any research to do, really. Live Epically will move up to an electrical engineer. More cowbell, we might as well move up to full miner. Uh, we can set some more eggs in here. I wish you could automate this part of it and just tell it, like, keep putting in hatching eggs as long as you have hatching eggs available. But you can't. Gold amalgam? Um, yeah, we could try making it a gold amalgam. But, I mean... Iron's supposed to be pretty good also. Melting point's 1,500 degrees. It's just, it's taking damage before that. To, to, uh, it's only like 70 degrees. I'm surprised it's overheating, actually. Enough to be damaged. Let's see how it goes. I can't have to keep an eye on it. Oh, good. They're digging it over here now, so that's good. They got that started. Hacking their way into another germy mass. Uh, this only needs a small transformer in here. I could I could just run heavy watt wiring all, in, all the way in there, but I don't really want to waste all that all the metal doing that. Uh, derpy wire. There we go. Server's Bloodborne, two dollars super jet. At Cryptic Fox, can you make the conveyor with steel now? You can make the conveyor with steel now. Oh, can you? Hold on a second. Shipping. Uh, conveyor loader. Ooh, you can. Oh, tungsten now too. What did I make it out of? Oh, I did make it out of refined metal. Why did I not use steel for that? I thought I did. No, I made it out of iron. Huh. All right. Well, that's an issue. Uh, let's let this door open, and then we'll deconstruct this. We'll make it out of steel. Smart storage to an automated door to drop gold out. Um. Yeah, that could be an idea. But even the smart storage is going to have a temperature issue, right? I mean, if we make this out of steel, it won't be a problem. It can actually handle the temperatures, but... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Start breaks long before it melts and gold is a bonus to overheat. It does, you're right, but um, steel also does. Or iron, rather. Um, but I, I'm just going to make it out of steel, because the steel's got a much higher capacity. Overheat temperature plus 200% versus gold, which is only plus 50. So if we make it out of steel, it'll be that. We have 600 steel, too, which is good. We're gonna need a whole lot more of that. Hey, Dread Thane, how you doing? Can't make it through the door? Uh, apparently they can. They just they just deconstructed it through the door. <laughs> I I, uh, I actually set the door so they could access it. Um, all right, in here we'll make this out of steel so we can actually get this thing to work right. Hopefully without breaking. 
Still snow. 1200 yen. Eating lunch and watching Oni. Relaxing. Thanks for the super chat. Still snow. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate the support as always. When you get to space, you can get some 900 plus material. Oh, that's cool. Oh, is that one of the new uh, the new medals or whatever they've ax they've added to the game? It's available on another planet, kind of thing. Let's see what kind of progress they're making up here. Oh, this is almost done. Um, put insulated tile in here. Ooh, the temperature's coming down here now too, because now that we have this kind of closed off, 40 degrees here, where it's like 70 on the other side of the insulation, so that's good. Those uh, wheeze warts will start to do their job finally. I mean, it's still hot, but it's significantly better than it was. So that's good. Uh, while they're at it... Where do I want to put my suits? Okay, so in our stations here we have... Jet, su jet suit checkpoint is now done. So we can have that. I'm going to give them like a little exit point over here for them to go out. Like a door or something that will open and close. And they can fly up out the door. Uh, and then we'll need a jet suit dock. These things are huge. So we can't have all that many of them. This thing's a, a pig for power, so I'm not sure if it's going to start overloading stuff on me. What else is on this? That pump. This thing, even though we're not using it, we can deconstruct that. Man, all of this is on it. But these are only being run intermittently, so that's not necessarily that bad, but I, th I should probably swap most of this out with conductive wire. If we're going to power this system up here. Sadly, this is going to take a fair amount of resources. However, we do have lots of iron. So let's uh, let's swap this out with the, the uh, refined iron. So we'll swap all that out. Um, this one I'm not going to be able to swap out entirely. Because they can't get... Oh, I guess they can go inside that way to get to it. So we'll uh, we'll send refined wire in here. And they'll have to come in for the, the upper access point to get into it. This one here. And then afterwards we'll end up swapping out the, uh, the transformer that's on this to a full-size transformer. So I can handle it. Swap with heavy watt? Uh, I don't really want to swap with heavy, but I'm, I'm swapping it with the conductive wire because the conductive will carry 2,000. I suppose they're just 1,000. I can't remember how much power these these suits take. I'm reluctant to use heavy watt wire just because it, it, the, it's got such a huge negative decor effect and it takes so much more metal. Whereas I have a supply of refined metal, I don't have a supply of just just normal metal so much. Uh, let's see, the jet suit checkpoint doesn't take any. 120 watts for these things. That's actually not bad. So, the conductive wire will work fine there. Deconstruct these wires so we don't need them. That's going to take them a while. That'll be a long-term project for duplicates, I think. You should play Roblox. Oh, I really have no interest in playing Roblox. I'm sorry. <laughs> My daughter plays it, but it's not something that I enjoy. Full-size Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put in the Optimus Prime of Transformers. It'll be fine. As long as it's not a Decepticon, I guess it'll be all right. Arcades 1200, Jetpacks 120. Makes sense. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Oh, oh they were playing it, too. Got some snaz... Oh, what? that's what we probably should do, is give some, give some more people snazzy suits. Oh, we, yeah, we don't have enough power to run this thing. <laughs> they turn on the arcade machine and it just shuts everything down. Oh, wait. What's going on here? I ran out of coal. I have 9.6 tons of coal. Where's all my coal supplies? You guys need to relocate the coal. This is ridiculous. Where else do we have coal? Uh, great, thanks. Show me the one tiny little lump sitting there. This is full of coal also, so this needs to be... 
I've got my coal spread. I, you know, I specifically moved my my system over there so that I would have my coal concentrated in one place where the generators were instead of having it spread all over the place. And then I totally messed it up anyway. Uh, this thing here needs to go off now. So now that these are set at a 7 and the rest of the storages are set at a 5, they should relocate all the coal up here so we can use it for the generators. Ridiculous. What do you mean you don't play Roblox? I don't like the game. I have zero interest in playing it. I'm sorry. You actually stored 700 recomper in the center of your base. Got it. Oh yeah, that would get a little bit warm. <laughs> Just a tiny bit, a little bit. Automation always breaks down over priorities. Well, yeah, the issue is that um, I just wasn't storing the, the coal up here. These were set at a priority five or seven. No, they were to seven, but so were the other storage containers. So they had no purpose in relocating the coal. These aren't even running now. There they go. It's funny, like, there's only a couple things that tap a huge amount of power, and when they do... If those generators don't have the ability to turn on, that kind of causes a few problems. There they go. Now they're moving it around. That's what we want. Store it up there where it belongs. Can I not reach this generator? Should be able to. Why is it not loading that? These are all set at an 8. Hmm. Interesting. Just do it with a $2 super chat. You've heard Nat King has coal, but I'm bump. <laughs> oh, there they go. Now it's loaded. Got all the puns. This is going to take a while for them to build all this, unfortunately. Uh, let's. Oh, they started that. I'm going to leave a little opening here. It's already cooling down in here. It's 42 degrees. Just a nice balmy 42 over here. <laughs> so I'm not in a big rush to plug that one hole. I'll leave that open so they can go up and build the ladder up above. This is all full of chlorine. I'm going to have to get rid of that, too. Oh, look at the poor little guy hanging out here, wheezing on the chlorine gas. That's what every duplicate wants. Spend their time hanging out in chlorine. Dude, that joke was cold. Oh, the puns. You're killing me over here. I like the big hatch towers. You have a lot of coal. It can be swept in one place. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't set it up that way, and I probably should have. I mean, I could swap these out for screen doors, and then when they poop and stuff, it'll all fall through. Just take a little bit of metal, and then have like a couple sweepers at the bottom. Just pick it up and run it over there. Um, I don't know that there's all that much in here right now. They're cleaning it up pretty consistently. And with 18 duplicates, it's not like we're lacking for, for physical labor to any great extent. Okay. I have a plan to build up here for these things, but they're going to need petroleum. So we're going to need to run liquid piping all the way up there in order to pump petroleum up. We can run the liquid piping behind this stuff. Granite. Yeah. I guess I'll use insulated just so we don't add any heat to the colony. Alright, so we'll run the piping behind all this. Um, it's going to have to come all the way up from down here. I prefer not to pipe it through the base, just in case it lets off heat. So I'm going to send it up here. Over to here. We can add another line going up this way, and that can connect there. So that'll, that should be fine. Let's um, break down more of this. Take all that out of there. And then all of these are going to need a pipe running off them also. Uh, I think I'll go this route. Man, we made, a, we made quite a bit, actually. Okay, we're going to need a pipe bridge. Throw that there, throw one here. And then hopefully that doesn't cause any confusion issues for the movement of the liquid, but 
We'll see how that goes. I can't. Uh, I'll have to build through here this and then. Oh, it's gonna let out a bunch of a bunch of gas. Um. I don't want the gas coming out of here, so I'm gonna not plan to build that way. Let's just go here, and we can run it through the bottom instead. Yeah, like that. And then we'll... <laughs> this, this, like, double piping thing I've got set up over here is like a, it's a hot mess over here. I'm gonna come down this way. Cross over... So I guess I can send it over this way. Instead of trying to build it up here, I can just send it over. I think it's better to set the incubators inside a stable and then set how many critters you want inside the critter dropping new setting. Well, I, actually, I have the um, the critter drop-off point set up for how many I want in them. The incubators themselves, it doesn't really matter where they're located because they'll go in... They'll, the, the critter will stay inside the incubator until you tell the a duplicate to go take them out. So that part of it shouldn't really matter so much. Excuse me, couldn't hit you fast enough. Gosh, this is so sloppy. I hate having a super sloppy mess like this, but what are you gonna do? Uh, throw this in here. This can go up to here, and then this will go all the way up. Pike bridge here. Duplicants go on strike shortly after for all the manual labor I'm making them do. <laughs> there we go. That'll get our petroleum all the way up to the top. That's a long way. Good lord. There's so much pipe there, actually. It's going to be a, like, uh, it's going to be the kind of thing where, like, all the petroleum that's stored in the container is going to wind up actively in the pipes on the way up there. And the containers will wind up empty. Oh, see, it's still in the snow. I missed, uh, missed your, your comment there saying you were leaving. Sibylline with a $2 super chat. Hi, Fox. Hi, Sibylline. Thanks for the super chat. Okay. Did I ever get this thing set up? Nope. Of course I didn't. There we go. That works way better when I turn it on. How about that? I probably should have put it down at the bottom, actually. Because by the time it draws all the gas up here, it's actually going to send... Oh, man. The number of times I've moved this one sensor around, I swear. I'm like, I've got like a mental block when I'm building with this thing. Gas element sensor down here. Because by the time it draws all the gas up to the point where... It's, uh, it's no longer sensing natural gas up top. It'll have actually drawn a bunch of CO2 in. Which is super lame. Uh, and actually, these tiles here... If I make them solid tiles, it'll have to take the gas around the sides. Instead of from underneath. It's probably the way I want to go with that so I don't break stuff. When they do another industry upgrade, they have to make fuel barrels. Well, they kind of have them. I mean, they have these, right? You can kind of store liquids in them and stuff. You could probably set up a system where they could draw that off into, like, little containers and run it up top, but that's kind of a pain, too. Hope they fix the bug with the oxide tanks for the rockets. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played around with the rockets too much, so I don't know what kind of bugs they're running into, but... Birth with three full stacks of materials making the pipe. What did I? <laughs> Seriously, that's a lot of that's a lot of pipe. It shouldn't have been that much, but I don't think so. I did too. <laughs> that is a lot of pipe. That's an insane amount of pipe, actually. Good lord, I shouldn't have made it of insulated stuff. <laughs> What's the difference in consumption for the insulated? 
400 for insulated versus 100 for the right. Oh man. Oh, you know what? I don't really care about heat out here. Let's swap all this pipe out for non-insulated stuff. That was silly of me. <laughs> Let's make it out of regular piping. Who needs common sense when we can have uncommon sense? Oop, what happened there? That was weird. I don't even care about the heat down here. I don't know what I was thinking. I kept thinking I was going to have to go partly into my base with it, but... Clearly I don't, so let's just save materials. <laughs> BDSF buyer, $2 super chat. Here's a gift card for Home Depot to get more pipe. <laughs> We're gonna need more pipe. This is gonna take a whole lot of pipe. Uh, same thing up here. I don't really need insulated pipe here either. Let's cancel this. Just use regular pipe. I don't know why I wasn't thinking about the actual Um, the actual material requirement for all that insulated pipe. That's crazy. So hopefully it's not too hot, though, because I've got it running behind my plastic piping. Now, I think they, they did increase the melting temperature on the plastic, so it doesn't melt super easy anymore, but... <clears throat> I love Stan Rogers. He's singing yourself horse, singing white collar holler. <laughs> Watching your streams inspired me to make a new colony. I lasted a bunch of cycles this time because of your tips. That's awesome, Water Trico. Glad it went better for you. So it's time to say tarping the lyrics. <laughs> See ya, Zach. Thanks for coming out. This is going to take a while. They're going to be busy on all the different construction projects they've given them for a bit. But the important thing is they have a video game. And espresso. Espresso is probably the more important of the two, I think. Get your groove on. They get like a plus four morale benefit for drinking espresso. It's pretty good. The trouble is they can only do it one at a time. So it's a good thing we have like a couple different things they can do in there. How is our morale generation? Yeah, it's still around 20. Ooh, Summer Phillips, morale 35. So she got plus one for being a duplicate, which they all get. Plus two for washrooms. Plus three for shift break. Four shift break. Plus two for bedroom. Plus six for great hall. Plus 16 for superb meal. Plus two for played video games. Plus two for recently danced. Uh, and they had mediocre decor, so plus one. Job assignment, plus 20 morale needed. 35 morale they're generating. I had somebody actually leave a comment on, uh, on one of the videos. I think I was on the last stream. Might have been a prior one, I can't remember. Um, saying it seemed like 30 was an impossible target to hit. And clearly it's not. It's really, uh, there's 38 for Rangi, 35 for Voltron. It's really, the food is like the hugest, the, the hugest. <laughs> I'm making up words now. The food is really the largest component of producing good morale. And then you just combine it with all the little things you can control, like eating in a mess, uh, eating in a great hall, sleeping in a bedroom, having pl fully plumbed bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Do all the dupes at different times? No, I have a like a bit of a cycle going. I didn't. There's so many duplicates. I'm not gonna put them each on individual schedules. Um, there is some overlap. I probably should change the schedule so there isn't any overlap, and then they can get the best use out of the uh, the entertainment stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I haven't been trying to min max the the morale component of it because I was keeping their their job promotions relatively low. We were intentionally holding them back from me seeing any job progress, <laughs> and so. Uh, by not doing that, we kept the requirement pretty low, and then we didn't really need to do a whole lot of like uh, min-maxing to balance it out. Change transport tube one turns instead of two. Wait, what's this now? Oh no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna mess with your brain. <laughs> I'm gonna make it do a loop later. I wonder if you can, actually. If we could spiral it around and then use one of these to cross over its own pipe, we could have them go in a crazy loop for no good reason. <laughs> I feel like I want to do that now. 
Maybe move them over by two. Giving them clothes helps a little in using granite tiles to max out decor. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the decor values, like the, the values actually get really high in some areas. So when they're up here sleeping, 266 decor, 242, 274, 284 when they're in the dining hall. Uh, only 101 when they're in the rec room, unfortunately, because it's really limited for space. You can't place uh, can't place a lot of artwork up above. I'm also not helping by having these metal tiles here. I'm going to get rid of those. We'll play, replace those with the granite, maybe. Places with granite tiles. I don't really need those to be airflow tiles. I just needed to block off enough there that the room was the right size. So that might help a tiny bit with the decor there. It's not, not like it's going to have a big effect. Yeah, it's a few points higher. Nothing big. But the lack of ability to put artwork in this space is kind of a, kind of a nuisance. Uh, we could put plants in here, I guess. Put a couple of potted plants in. That might actually help a little bit with decor. <laughs> $2 dollars super chat. Hashtag loops for noobs. Do it! Alright, we'll, we'll try and do a little duplicate loop in here. It's completely pointless, but it's just something like novel to do, I guess. Uh, sorry, I gotta sneeze again. Excuse me. You can place some lights in there? Oh yeah, that might be a bad idea. It generates heat, unfortunately. Uh, but we could put a light in there. I'm, just not, I'm, not, I'm not really thrilled about extra heat production. Oh, look at this. It's nice and cool in here now. That piping we're running behind is doing a really fantastic job of cooling the whole garden area. I'll think about putting lights in there. That, that will actually be an easy way to add some decor value. It just, uh, I just don't, I'm just not really a fan of the heat that it produces. Let's get rid of that. Actually, it doesn't even matter if that's there, probably. I'm going to need to put a ladder here. And another one here. Okay, we will need transit tubes going this way. Down here, across here. Oh, I can't do it with the ladder there. This is going to be completely pointless, but <laughs> something randomly novel. Uh, ooh, that, that won't work. I've got to go here. And then this may not work. It just occurred to me the transit crossing may not may not work here. Deconstruct. Oh, wait, cancel. This might not work. Drat. Because I don't think it'll recognize that as a pass-through in behind this thing. It only allows for direction of travel this way. Ah. All right, I'm going to cancel this. I don't think it's going to work. It'd be a waste of our time. Waste of time and materials. It can't cross over that way, unfortunately. That kind of sucks. So much for making a loop. Uh, the drywall doesn't add any decor, unfortunately. Unless they've changed it. Uh, if we look at the utilities, thermally reactive. Doesn't have any kind of a decor benefit, unfortunately. Now you can get plus 20% decor, but plus 20% on zero is still zero. Like if we, uh, we could throw like an experimental one in here. Let's make this out of granite. And we'll just do a, just a little four square right there. The decor value right here, well, it's non-existent. Where are we here? Uh, decor value here right now is total decor plus 15, and that's because of the palm lily. Uh, if we dig this up, though, because I want to get want to get a true value. Positive that it doesn't give any any decor benefit, but we'll check it. 
Yeah, the Shime Nymphs all died off. I didn't have anything to feed them with, unfortunately. So the ones that were in the base all died. There were some right at the very, very beginning, but now they're gone. Got a couple plants in there. That'll help a tiny bit. If you do across the tubes, then go straight, or is there a curve too? No, there's no uh, there's no T intersection, and that's kind of what we need actually. If you make just a T intersection, they'll take the shortest route possible, so they'll never go around the loop. They'll always just go in and hit the little curve, so we can't really do it. Do I have enough gold for metal metal tiles in the recreation room? Uh, I might actually. Make, well, actually, we might even make them out of plastic tiles, I guess. Decor plus 15. Yeah, actually, that might work. Decor plus 5. We could make it out of metal tiles. Now, it's going to be hot because the, the gold that we have is from the volcano. Well, let's try that. Let's see how this how this impacts the decor. And whether it gives them all a, like an extremely hot foot. It'll be like a heated floor in your bathroom. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Don't cross the tubes. I mean the streams. I stored the eggs. Which eggs? Oh, actually, that reminds me. Do I have, uh... We might have... Oh, yeah. We got lots of rye egg available. Let's make let's make some omelets. No. There we go. Oh, you mean the... the um... The eggs from the shine bugs. Uh, I don't remember doing that, but it's possible. We're actually getting quite a bit of food out of these guys, both in the form of meat and in the form of uh, in the form of eggs. What is our meat total at now? Meat's only at two. Uh, fried mushrooms we have, barbecue we have, pepper bread we have lots of, bristle berries we have a ton of now because they've been harvesting up here like crazy. All of a sudden, the temperature of your base becomes unbelievably hot. It might, actually. It very well might. Berry sludge would be another thing we could make. Now, it's only good quality. And it requires sleep wheat grains, which isn't really ideal. I think I'll save the sleep wheat grains for pepper bread. Yeah, it might become really hot. I mean, I don't know what the temperature of the, the metal is over here right now. Uh, let's make sure nobody can access this. This needs to be set for gold. There we go. Start delivering some gold in there. Gold coming out of here is only like 30 degrees. That's actually not bad because there's a whole pool of water here. It's falling in the water and cooling off. I don't really even need to store it down here. That's crazy. I'm going to anyway, but look at all that refined gold. That's amazing. If only you could get steel that way. This pool of water here is doing a remarkable job of insulating the volcano. Considering it had steam in there that was 100 and some odd degrees, and it's now like 12 degrees in there. That's pretty good. You missed the last stream. Are you still alive? Uh, well, I, I didn't stream on Tuesday, but uh, I don't think you're in this particular colony, Nick. I had a, another colony that I started while we were waiting for this one to become part of the core... Part of the core game. And then we went back to the original colony that we were working on because it's closer to the space race. These guys are taking forever to do all this stuff. I, I really wanted to get started on like a space training facility, but we're not even close. Not even close. Let the core of the room below shine through. Yeah, but the decor in the room below is not very good. Because I have just this stuff down here. Like, down here we have decor 125. It's, it's The decor is actually higher above here. I think it would be better if we build these tiles. 178? 173? I don't know. The decor right here is 178. Above the regular tile is 168. So it does drop a little bit. We are getting a, a little bit better radiance from the, the the space here where we have the massage tables because we have double pictures there. But all through the middle of here, the decor value is actually lower than it is the above, I think. Eh, it's like 60-something. Yeah, We'll see what happens. I'm going to try with the gold floor first. I want to see what happens to that. Up to 211 above where we actually built the floor there.
<laughs> Decor 41, but they've also got a mess on the floor. So when they come, there we go, up to 100 now. I don't know. We'll build, a, build the floor to gold and see what happens. The new gas storage tanks are so useful, but they keep getting full. Oh, yeah, they fill up so easy. Like, these ones here are full of oxygen that we had excess that came out of our steam geyser over here. Uh, which I think is dormant right now. That's idle. It's going to erupt again. This thing's still pumping water. I don't even remember where it's sending the water. Oh, yeah, dead oxygen production. That explains that. Good times. Gold tiles, the dupes are getting faint. Yeah, the streets are paved with gold in this colony. That's what happens when you have a gold volcano, I guess. Let's try and make, uh, no, that's the, that's not the suit I'm looking for. These are not the droids we're looking for. I don't need any of that stuff right now. Can't do any rocket research because we need that celestial stuff. Cover the wires with drywall. See if that helps. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Properties. Let's see what the, the, what the decor impact is of these wires. I don't think most of the wires have any kind of a decor effect. Yeah, decor is zero. So they, they're not... They don't have a net impact to decor. Plus or minus. The heavy watt wires have a negative decor, but these ones are fine. Let's check up here. Oh, they didn't build that yet. The air pump in the steam guy's room is busted. Yeah, it is. Very. <laughs> it keeps getting... All this stuff in here keeps getting smashed. Too much heat. But I'm not even moving air right now, so it's fine. I'm, I'm really just moving water. Uh, this is only 1,800 grams, so... it's It really only becomes a problem when this gets up to five point... Like, like uh, five kilograms or whatever, and then the geyser won't release any more steam. So for now, it's fine. I'll have to go in and repair that when it gets to the point where the pressure builds up in here too much. Please explain to me your oxygen setup. I saw your video tutorial for one electrolyzer, but uh, sometimes I see your colony has two electrolyzers in one room. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a couple of different things. Uh, this one, I think we have... Yeah, we have a double electrolyzer setup. Now, this is not actually the most efficient setup, but this is what I'm using currently. Two electrolyzers produce oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen rises up and it drifts across the top where it can be picked up by this pump, which moves it out into our hydrogen generators. And those will produce power for us. At the bottom, I have three pumps set up. This middle one is currently not being used because it was feeding oxygen into this, I think. Maybe it is still being used. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, so this middle pump is actually sending oxygen out to my exosuits, but these, uh, these other two pumps are moving oxygen into the base. If I was going to make this more efficient... Uh, it would be better to have the hydrogen pump in the middle and the hydrogen and the uh, the electrolyzers on the outside and then have one more tile gap above to allow more hydrogen to rise up so this doesn't hit max pressure as often and that would allow a little bit more oxygen flow into the lower portion now these are these are generally moving consistently uh, a kilogram of oxygen per second but when all three pumps are running, it tends to create a bit of a vacuum at the bottom, and then it's not moving as much oxygen effectively into the base. But this is what I'm using in here currently. This is producing pretty much all of the oxygen that, that's being used in the base right now. And as you can see, it's we're not having any oxygen issues at all. I do have a second line that I had actually feeding in here. that it was, um, Or a third line, I guess, that was feeding oxygen in here, but we don't even need it. Uh, so I have it feeding these uh, exosuits up top. But just with uh, with what we have in here, the whole colony is like super well pressurized. We have no issues at all for oxygen. Never cross your fingers and hope your new desktop on Friday. Ooh, that'd be nice. You can never get the shipping rails to work right. How do you get the receptacle to work? Uh, okay, so there's a couple things you need to you need to look at. Uh, over here we have a so here's the, what we have set up for our gold shipment. Um, you want to have this obviously in range so it can pick stuff up. That's relatively straightforward. You need to make sure that you have the conveyor loader as the one that's being fed by your uh, your auto sweeper. That connects to the rail, which then goes down to wherever you want to store it. The storage containers that you want to put the items in, um, you want to have a higher priority than what you have on your conveyor receptacle. 
So I have these at a six, and, and where the receptacle's at a five, and that way the sweeper will pick up the gold when it gets there. If you don't do that, the gold will arrive, and the sweeper just won't do anything with it. Notice you got 100 product tiles with no main pipe feeding each one individually. Does the pipe run straight through the tiles? Uh, we, yeah. This one here it does. Uh, the top one I had it set, I, I set it up differently because we ran into a bug that happens sometimes where the, the water will stop moving when it gets to like the second or third tile. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen sometimes. Uh, and so in that instance, I redirected the water in order to get the, to flow properly. But more often than not, this is just how I do it. I just run the pipe straight through the middle. What'll happen is it will fill up the, the tiles in, in, in succession. So once this tile's full, it'll overflow to this one and then overflow to this one. Whereas in this setup, each time you split the pipe, it's splitting the load by 50%. So half the water goes down, half moves on. Half of that water goes down, half moves on. This first tile will fill up fairly quickly, so it ends up backing in. But what this does is it better distributes the water across all of the tiles, where this one, it has to fill them up in order. It's like the difference in your Christmas lights between having sequence and series. Sometimes, like I said, it just backs up and it doesn't work. So in this case, too, um, I'm also using the pipe that runs behind these plants as a way to to, uh, to moderate the temperature in, a, in the, the, the farm area. So the pipe that's running behind the plants is helping to offset the heat that's being produced by the lights that are just above, and that keeps them in a temperature range where they're not going to stifle. Clay doesn't need to run a manual just like cryptic. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't. There's all still. There's so much complexity in this game. I mean, Brothgar does some amazing stuff too because he 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 really gets into the nitty gritty of like all the physics of how the different things work. So he can, he's got some pretty complex builds. Um, but yeah, there's really uh, there's a lot to it. I, I don't even know how you would put it all in an individual instruction manual because there's just so much. I don't think anyone would want to sit and read it all. It'd be it'd be like reading stereo instructions. They need to add struts so you can add excessive struts to your rocket. <laughs> if we could put extra ladders on the rocket, then we'd be all set. Until we can have extra ladders, I just won't be happy. I haven't had insulator or fertilizer in this thing, like, ever. <laughs> I, just, I probably should consider doing that, but I think we're actually cleaning all the polluted water to use for regular water. Well, well... I think with Brothgar stuff is usually he starts with a hypothesis and then he works through the hypothesis in the video. So that's why it tends to be longer. Whereas the tutorials that I set up were like, okay, here's the message I'm delivering and here's how I'm going to deliver it in a clear and concise way. So it's just a different approach. One's a tutorial kind of thing and one's an experiment that you can see the outcome of. And I think both are interesting. All right, let's check the uh, decor on these things. Yeah, these don't produce any decor value. Negative decor. The decor actually got worse where those tiles are. It's hard, a little bit hard to tell because there's, it's being affected by things around it. Like this plastic piping seems to have a, a positive decor impact. Yeah, there's, we're getting nothing out of the tiles. Save materials. Technically we have no idea how long a cycle is, let alone how long a dupe year is. That's fair enough. Although it does go out by awfully quickly. Thank you. That bug's been in the game since uh, the oil update. Wasn't sure whether it had been fixed or not, though. Yeah, it's it's still there. It, it's not 100%. Like, it, it doesn't happen every time. It only happens sometimes. Um, this was working perfectly fine for the longest time without having to do the separate pipe. And then at one point, I loaded up the game and it wasn't working. So we sort of worked around it. But it, like I said, I ended up using this as a, uh, as a heat management system anyway. So it actually worked out pretty well. Overall... The heat in the colony is not bad. I mean, things are a little warm on some of the bedrooms and stuff, but considering heat is really one of the big one of the big killers in this particular um, this particular level of the game. I don't know what to call it. It's not really a level, but um, after all the updates and stuff they've done, the heat really became a, like a real base killer, uh, and we've got it well under control on this one. How big is that base? Uh, it's fairly big. So this is it zoomed out. Um, this is the core part of the base right here. This is this part right here is where we started out. Um, we expanded out here to add in our ranch for our hatches. Uh, down bottom here we put in our farm for uh, for mushrooms, and then we expanded out here to do some power production. 
and oxygen production out in a cold biome. Uh, we dug our way down here through a cold biome so we could get all the way down to here to access oil. Uh, down here, we're, we're, we're processing the oil to make natural gas and plastics. Uh, this whole area I just kind of dug out because I, I wanted access to more space. Uh, but we actually we have a bunch of uh, we had a bunch of puffs flying around in there before. And then up top here is where we have our plastic vacuum tube going all the way up so we can build um, our jetpack space up top. And then up here is where we're going to have our rocket launch bay. And then over on the left-hand side over here, we have uh, there's a couple geysers here we're, we're accessing and then a uh, volcano. Uh, over on the right-hand side, over in this cold biome, is where the gold volcano is that we tap into. Uh, that's getting us refined gold that we're feeding in to make stuff. So we've uh, we've actually exposed quite a bit of the, the interior of the asteroid because this is the left the extreme left hand side. It doesn't go any farther left. This is the extreme right. We can't go any farther right. It's just a matter of up and down at this point. You always have to put wheeze warts in your bristle farm. Uh, yeah, see, I kind of took a different approach. Um, we ended up tapping into the uh, the cold biome that's over here, and we're making use of uh, an anti-entropy thermal nullifier. So the hot water that's coming from the geysers above, uh, if you if you didn't see those streams, the hot hot water in the geysers above is being piped all the way down. It's coming in on this bottom pipe. It's like 46 and a half degrees by the time it gets down here. It's working in a cycle through here. Um, it's feeding the this oxygen production system, which is um, the only being used to support exosuits right now. Uh, but then it, the pipe goes past here, and I have radiant piping going behind the thermal nullifier, so that even though over here it's 45 degrees, by the time it passes the nullifier, it's 1.5 degrees. That passes along here. It actually ends up warming up, and then we're piping it into the base through here, and I have a couple of points on the, on the pipeline where I actually have some radiant piping. Um, and that's kind of cooling everything in here. And then where the farm is, because we're sending water in that's at a low temperature, the whole farm area is actually nice and cold. I could do with this actually being built and being bigger. I'm just out of space. Yeah, it wasn't debug. If, if you hit Alt S, it just it goes into like a it removes the overlay and it lets you zoom way out. There's only one little spot on the surface we've actually uncovered. I think we're forgetting something. Cough, astronaut, cough. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's gonna. We're not even at the point of getting too many astronauts yet. There, we have a pump built here now. If they could just get the rest of this going. Uh, so party six. We're not even gonna get to. You know what it is? I start every stream with an objective. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. This is what I'm gonna focus on. And by the time I'm done, I never get anything done I actually planned on. <laughs> it's kind of how I work. Start with the best of intentions and then arrive somewhere else. That's pretty much how my whole plan goes. If they get this finished, though, we'll pump all the water out of here and then we can start to dig all this out. Uh, we'll need to convert the polluted oxygen here into clean oxygen, which will get rid of the germs. Alternatively, we could create a vacuum by pumping it all out. That'll get the germs out, too, but we'll probably just convert it. The golden floor works! Uh, we have the golden floor. Let's check the decor. Oh yeah, it's a good shape. 200 and some odd now. So getting some some nice stress relief by hanging around in there. And that actually gives a, a benefit to the floor under to the space underneath because it's got that it's getting a positive decor effect on both the above and below. That's pretty good. Uh where else does decor kind of stink? We could replace the bathroom floor with it, I guess, but no, I don't want to do that. It'll transfer too much heat. I have this weird little setup over here that, uh, with the bathroom like right above the water sieve, the water sieve gets pretty hot. I don't want to transfer that heat into the bathroom because it's a little bit on the warm side. Nevertheless, so far so good. Love this game, but it's too hard. Uh, yeah, it is. It is really complicated. I mean, you could play it a lot more simply. Like you don't have to get into a lot of the more complex things, but it's. I mean, for me, that it's the more complex things that actually get more fun. Hey, Durgan. No trouble. Everybody's got a life. Oh, great. Now that I have built uh, the little ingrate gold floors, uh, oxygen should be enough. Nice. Keep the slime in a compactor in a chlorine room. Would sanitize it? Um, n n no. Unfortunately, the chlorine doesn't get rid of surface germs. 
It, it stops it from propagating, so you won't have um, you won't have germs in the air that are breathable. But I mean, there's two types of germs too, right? There's surface germs, and there are the ones that are airborne. When it comes to slime lung, it's the airborne ones that are a problem. The surface ones aren't. They could be covered in surface germs, and be perfectly fine. Uh, it's just if they're breathing in the airborne ones. Uh, and then on the reverse side, with food poisoning, the airborne germs aren't a problem at all, but the surface ones are. Because if they eat the surface germs, that's when they get food poisoning. But they can breathe in as much airborne food poisoning as they want, and it doesn't cause a problem. So um, I generally don't bother too much with disinfecting things. Instead, I just sort of store it away in a place where I'm not worried about the germs. Like here... Oh, this is this has slime in it that's being used to to produce our um, our mushroom farm, but I just keep it underwater, and you can see if we look at the germ overlay, it's got a fair amount of germs. Actually, well, the one's actually it has zero surface germs. That's weird. What's in here? Yeah, it's full of eleven tons of slime, but there's no surface germs. That's weird. Whereas this one has two point eight million surface germs, but it's sucked away, so it can't make uh, it can't make polluted oxygen, and then it's not a problem. So I, I generally prefer just to, to store it away that way. I disinfect almost nothing. Today on Lifestyles of the Rich and du <laughs> Dupless, <laughs> we go to the inescapable space prison where they don't walk on normal tiles, they walk on golden tiles. <laughs> if I could do the Robin Leach voice, it would probably be better. I'm Robin Leach. Oh. Oh, look at that. All the snow melted there. I can't even get across here. We probably should do something about that. Alright, that's done. Uh, if I set this door so they can access it again, they can go finish the wiring in there. It's all wired up. They haven't even begun to build these things. What do you think? Should we make the rocket suits out of gold, too? <laughs> I love seeing them go through the tubes. Oop, they're finally delivering iron. Look at that. When they get busy, they're really productive. Oh, I didn't really need that ladder up there, but okay, thanks, guys. Uh, let's have somebody analyze this. Wait a minute. I forgot I locked that door. <laughs> I already had it set to be analyzed. <laughs> Just nobody could get to it. Reboot movie on golden tile. <laughs> Loops for dupes. Well, we were gonna try and do a, a like a loop with the uh, with the tubing, but I couldn't. It won't over, it won't do the crossover right. Uh, this volcano here. This one's an iron volcano. It's currently dormant, uh, but we did get quite a bit of iron out of it. So if we look at our refined iron, we have nine tons of refined iron, uh, and then we have like three point four tons of refined gold. But we've been using refined iron quite a bit. I all this wiring in here that I I just replaced. Is all refined iron. Uh, so we got lucky. We had a refined iron and refined gold, both of which are useful. So, plus we can use refined iron to produce steel down here, which I should actually make some more of. What's our temperature like in here now? It started to even out. The oil that we're using for lubricant in here is getting a little, little bit nicer. Uh, so let's make some more steel. It'll get all mega hot again. Which is probably going to heat up the water supply that I'm actually sending through to my... Uh, this... Uh, oh, it is insulated. Okay. Delivered lime. We should probably make some more ceramics. We're going to need more glass, so I should make more glass. Uh... Hello, McFly. Oh, there we go. There's only one recipe, but it's still gonna make you pick a recipe. I wonder if later on they're gonna add another one. Oh, that's funny. The multi glass looks like bottles now. That's weird. Might as well take out those polluted oxygens. Which ones? This one in here. Now you can pipe oil from Texas to everywhere else. Yeah. Look, as soon as they start using this thing, like, watch the heat build up in here. It's gonna get crazy. Yeah, maybe it's gonna be cold enough. It'll hold off for a little bit. But the when I've done this before, oh, there it goes. 
Up here, this is all radiant pipe, I think. No, no, it's not even. It's just regular pipe, but it's not insulated piping up there. Look at the heat. Boom. But on the plus side, it's actually exchanging heat more with this pipe here. I should actually change this over to regular. Let it let it get hotter in here so it can take off some of the heat from this system before it runs behind the anti-entropy thermal nullifier. Because she's a little a little spicy there. Yeah, it's not really affecting the temperature. That's good. <laughs> Look how hot it gets. And all that was to make like three pieces of metal. Like it's crazy how much heat it produces. You, you wouldn't want that sitting in the middle of your colony because it would just obliterate everything. Even with this thing running full tilt, the everything around it is still melting. Well, it's not even full tilt. Like it's going off and on, but. Uh, Dragon AD, you gave Fox a whole sixty dollars from YouTube memberships. What's this now? Oh, for the whole year. Yeah, it's been a year, Durgan. Is it really? I can't. I can't even tell. Hold on a second. I'm gonna go check. Cause it actually, uh, in the membership section on my thing, it'll show me how long everyone's been a member. And I'm. It might have been a year. That's crazy. I can't even believe I've had it for a year. Time flies. There's still uh, there's still channels that don't have uh, don't have memberships as an option yet. It's funny we've had it that long. It's going super slow. <laughs> I clicked on it, but it's not changing. And we got uh, we have 60 members now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if I go all the way back, oh my gosh, a year! That is crazy. Live epically at 10 months. Elaine Ryan's at a year. Kathleen Hart at a year. Blue Rabbit at a year. Evil Canuck at a year. There's a whole bunch of people here at a year. That's insane. I can't believe I've had it. I can't believe we've had channel memberships for a year now. That's um, that's just blowing my mind, to be entirely honest. It feels like it's only been a couple of months. <laughs> Need your money for Twitch streamers. Not the Twitch streamers. Oh, yeah, I have a Twitch account now, too, so you can go there. It's okay. <laughs> We're on the 20th member. Oh, yeah, I guess he would have been. That's crazy. Well, thank you for supporting the channel for so long. I mean, it, like I said, it's uh, it, sometimes it just feels like it's been a few months. I, I can't believe it's been a whole year. Wow, six kilograms of steam. That's a lot of steam in there now. Oh, there we are. We kind of maxed out our pressure. <laughs> now I got to go in and fix that pump. I guess I should give them access to the door. Uh, which door is locked? No, they already have access to it. Just nobody's bothering to fix it. Well, that's just great. It doesn't really matter, though. I, I, I don't have anywhere to send that oxygen right now, anyway. These tanks are full. If I pump it over there, it's got nowhere to go. How many in a year? Um, hold on a second. Oh no. I closed my YouTube window, I think. Oh, there we go. There's at least six or eight people in a year. It's crazy. I mean, every time I think back about how long I've been working, I've been, what I say, working, <laughs> working at YouTube, it, uh,. It's it's amazes me. So I think I'm I'm approaching four and a half years now. I think of this channel in particular. I hit my four year anniversary um, just a little while ago so, since I, I put up my first video. I actually had the channel set up for months before I put the first video up, and uh, it's been over four years now, and that just uh, that blows my mind. What a fun hobby. Uh, let's see, one year there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's eight people that are at a year on the, the membership program. That's amazing. Amazing. Uh, will oxalate and bleach stones still emit gas if they're stored underwater? No, they won't. If you have them underwater, that's a, that's an easy way to stop anything from off-gassing. So that includes anything that emits gas. So uh, slime, 
well, there's really only three things because <laughs> it's all the only ones that admit it. But um, slime won't, won't, um, bleach stone won't, and neither will oxalate. If you have them underwater, it uh, keeps them from off gassing. They basically they need a place around them to release the gas too, and the water takes up that space. And in this game, gas and water can't occupy the same space, so it, it stops it from off gassing. Tells you how long it takes to get it all going. Yeah, I mean, unless you're, like, crazy lucky, there are... So, the, the Fortnite craze really exploded a lot of channels. There were a lot of channels that when Fortnite started out and they were just launching the Battle Royale, their channels didn't even exist yet. And in, and in less than a year, they're at a half a million or a couple million. Um, so, like, outside of, like, an, an odd phenomenon like that that could really explode your channel, it really does take a long time to build it up. I mean, I think... Some people start a YouTube channel thinking it's going to be like a quick win. Oh, I'm going to make this. Everybody's going to come watch it. My channel is going to explode. I'm going to rake in a whole pile of cash and I'll be I'll be Markiplier running around with, you know, whatever, 20 million subs or what have you. And it just doesn't work that way. Most people are disappointed and stop doing it because they're, they have unrealistic, unrealistic expectations that way. But it does take a long time. Man, these guys are just... Chug it along nice and fine. Look at the look at the calories we have built up now. 355,000. We're in good shape. Let's make more mushrooms. Make sure we have food for the common people to eat. <laughs> we got our astronaut prep team. They're being fed around. Oh, good. We're finally moving the water out of here. Um, which means I could probably start digging some of this out. It's gonna take a while to dig all this out here. I'm not. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll make a space in here about yay big, um, and we'll use it for a couple different things. So we can put our, our astronaut training facility in here, uh, but I might want to use some other space here for something else. So we'll try to clear out a large enough area that I can do a couple things. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's gonna have their own opinion about what uh, about what Mark and Jack and what them and Jack Septicai and what have you what they produce. But you can't argue with the fact that they've been extremely successful and they've hit on a very good market, so. It's not easy, Jack Septic we're 12 hours a day even doing his own editing. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, you know, you, you really can't afford to get an editor until you get to a point where you have a certain measure of success. Uh, I edit all my own stuff, which is probably why I don't produce as much pre-recorded content as I was. Now that I'm streaming more, I find it much harder to find the time to, to, uh, to do recorded things. It's also kind of the fun of it, though. Like, you're stitching everything together through your own work effort. It's it's one of those things where, like, it's a lot of work. And realistically, if I was doing this full time, I would be putting in more time than I am just in my own job. Yeah, my coal is running a little low. Um, but it's just, you know, because you enjoy it, you 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 drive yourself harder to, to, to do the work, I guess. Uh, I'm sure we have a big pocket of coal around here somewhere that I haven't tapped into. I mean, that one's fair-sized. Uh, I'd like to get one that's easily accessible. Oh, this diamond down here we haven't even touched. It's really only good for temp shift plates, though. Um, Alright, we can dig up here, actually. This one's relatively accessible. It's in a pretty neutral biome, too. So we'll tap into that coal. Uh, I'm sure we have other pockets of coal hiding around here too, but uh, this is all coal here too, actually. If we uh, if we build a ladder up through the middle of this, then I can dig all this out. That'll give us a good supply of coal for a while. What are we at here? Uh, consumable ore. Cool, 4.6 tons of it. So, I mean, there's still a fair amount there, but it would not hurt to have more. It's not something we want to run out of, because that's my main power supply right now. Forgot to ask, is your oxygen set up with two electrolyzers and four pumps self-sufficient like the one in your tutorial video, or does it need to borrow power from the main grid? Um, no, it's self-sufficient. Because uh, on this one I have... Uh, I'm actually supplying excess power to the main grid right now, I think. Uh, I have two... Uh, uh, two hydrogen generators in this setup because I'm producing enough hydrogen to be able to feed both of them So because of that uh, it's still self-sufficient power wise now granted the water pump for this one is located somewhere else So it's not on the power grid 
Um, however, with the way that we have the wiring set up in here, um, no, actually, I have it disconnected. It is all self. It is all self-contained right now. I'm not feeding anything into the power grid right now. Um, you could have the the water pump on this system also. You just have to make sure you have enough batteries so that you're stocking up an overflow of power so that when you're overdrawing power to run the the pump for the water, then you're not um, you're not depleting all the power that's stored up in the system. But it's it's self sufficient. Like I said though, th this could be much more efficient than what I have it set up as. I started off. I think I think this was the colony where we started with just one size, and then I ended I ended up adding on the extra ones and. Planning it in advance, it, it would work better with the, the pump in the middle. So like, if I was going to do this again, uh, instead I would I would set it up with... Um, I'd do like the pump in the middle. And then on either side, you'd have your little setup like this. And then I, the only reason I use doors is so I could gain access to it easily. Like that. So it would go like one tile higher. And then on this side over here... And on this side, you'd have your two uh, your two electrolyzers to produce your oxygen and your hydrogen. Keep all this contained in. Like that. Obviously, you're probably going to want to have doors there so you can access it, but um, that's the general premise. Like this. And then put your two oxygen pumps. Like that kind of thing. I have a third oxygen pump because I'm producing air for um, for my uh, actually this these should be air flow tiles too or just not there. Um, I'm producing air uh, oxygen for my elect uh, my uh, my suits as well. So this setup it would be harder to have a, a, a three pump system because I think the oxygen would have a harder time getting through to the middle pump. So this middle pump is not going to be as efficient. But in general, this would allow a little bit more hydrogen to rise up, and then it's coming in from both sides to the pump in the middle. Um, so you'd probably max out your pressure less less frequently. That's how I if I if I rebuilt it in here, I think I'd do it that way. I was thinking of doing an art channel since I've been painting for cough 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 years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the only thing I... So for everyone who wants to start a channel, I mean, the hardest part initially is starting. That's where most people fail. They want to have a channel. They spend too much time planning with their channel, like all the stuff related to their channel. Like, oh, I've got to have... This has got to be my banner art, and I've got to do this stuff, and I can't do my channel until I've done these things, and I can't do it until I do those things. Um, where realistically, it doesn't take much to set up a channel and just start, and... It's getting started where most people fail. They do, they have all these grand visions of what they want to do, and they never actually get to the point of starting. So if you want to do it, jump in and try it. Just recognize too that it takes time. Um, you, there's so much on YouTube now that there's no specific reason that anyone should see you or watch you initially. So it's hard for them to discover you. But if they discover you and like you, you can build an audience off it and just try to have fun with it. Next step can also be attracting an audience and keeping them coming back. Yeah, that's that's really the thing there, right? It's it's hard to be found, and then when you're when you're found, you have to be interesting enough that people want to watch. Ken with a five dollar super chat. Thanks for always interesting content, by the way. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate the super chat. Thanks for the support. I really appreciate the community we have with my channel. Uh, I've seen some some channels that have a, and I've said this before, that have a they have a, a very toxic community where there's always a lot of. A lot of flaming each other in the chat and um, that kind of thing. And for the most part, I mean, everybody's been super nice. Um, lots of interesting questions and stuff. Like, people always want to know things. And, like, it's great. I love it. Sam, 90% of success is showing up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And then, and then like, 8 of the other 10% is continuing to show up. Because <laughs> once you get started, it can be very disheartening to put in a lot of effort into something and to feel like nobody's watching it. A man at Exosuit by the lower dock. Oh, that's weird. How did that even get there? Do I still have a weird route up top here where they can go around the suit system? I think I do. Uh, let's deliver the suit here. It must have happened at some point when they could come down with the suit and go around the Exosuit dock and they got down below. When I had that little gap I created there, that was... Uh, 
That was maybe not my my finest moment. All the hydrogen nicely filtered up in that top part, so that's good. Okay, so up in this area here, I don't know how much space to leave here. Oh, our, our poor little fish. He's all, he's all gonna be dead and stuff. All right, all this stuff has got to go. The whole thing, dig it all out. We're gonna give them steps so that if they if they dig this properly, they, they ideally won't trap themselves. Possibly, maybe twenty percent of the time. <laughs> I'll dig all that stuff out. They're not gonna dig this the right way, and then I'm gonna have to give them like ladders and stuff to do it because they don't have jetpacks up down here. Ooh, speaking of jetpacks. Ooh, squirrel. Ooh, look at this. Oh, what, what the. Where all this water come from? Uh, let's pop all this water up, please. Must be steam just condensing. All right, we have jetpacks. Uh, the apparently don't have fuel yet. It's all hotter in here. It got even warmer. Why? Oh, it's all this hot water flowing in. It's heating everything up. Ooh. They almost got up to here. This is, uh... Oh, yeah, that's some fairly warm regolith. 240 degrees. <laughs> uh, do we want to send somebody in there? I don't know. That's that's really spicy up there. Alright, so this needs a couple things. So it needs a liquid input, uh, which I didn't finish building because reasons. I don't know why I didn't finish. Um, we'll get that going in there. It is going to need a power setup. And we didn't finish sending the power over either. So we'll throw in some conductive wire in here. Connect that up. Okay. Once that's all hooked up, our petroleum should start to move up here. And then, of course, we're going to need to actually create the suit still as well. Um, and that takes a special special station, I believe. Now, maybe we can actually just make it to the exosuit forge. Let's see. Ah, we can. Nice. Jet suits allow flight. Sublimes duplicates with oxygen in toxic and low breathable environments. Uh, and it takes steel, which we apparently have a bunch of. But man, I was not expecting it to consume steel. So let's make two of those. And... Petroleum. How the heck am I going to get petroleum to this thing? It doesn't have a liquid input. Huh. Uh, there must be a bottler somewhere. Somewhere that I can get... Unless I... I seriously, if I'm going to have to dump petroleum into an open area and then just have an actual... Like a pitcher pump on it? I feel like there should be some other bottling system in here. Liquid reservoir. Is there an option in here to have them manually remove the contents? There is not. I have not mucked around with this at all. So this this is like the first time I've tried to play around with getting the stuff out of these containers. You can always just put a push Yeah, it just means I have to dump it on the ground though and then put the pitcher pump in it. Which is kind of a nuisance. I'd really rather not have to do that. So they have a canister filler. Automatically stores pipe gas into canisters for manual transport. But that's for ventilation. They have a canister filler and an emptier, but they don't seem to have that for plumbing. Which kind of stinks. All right. Well, so much for that. I'm actually gonna have to dump it into the ground. <laughs> I can't. All right. I'm, we'll get. Into, we're gonna get to that next time. I think. It's already after midnight my time. I did not get most most of what I wanted to get done tonight. Um. So so much for that plan. Oh yeah, we gotta empty the pipes. Ooh, look at you being all smart. Uh, is that the right one? It is. Okay. Brilliant notion. Okay, so we can have uh, we can have them empty the pipes. That'll put them in the little containers, and they can run that up. That's super smart. Brilliant idea. All right, so I'm gonna call it a wrap for tonight because it is after midnight, uh, and I probably should. <laughs> I'm just going to cancel that for now, because if I don't, they'll they'll sit there and endly, like, endlessly empty it, because I'll forget they're doing it. 
Uh, when we come back next time, we'll try to get some more done on the actual space up here that we're going to build into our little uh, rocket uh, astroneer training program. Uh, I probably should relabel the stream because I didn't get to any of the astronaut training stuff I wanted to get to, unfortunately. But we did manage to build a spot up here for our jetpacks. Uh, we started to dig out the area we're going to work on down here, which is good. Uh, and I, man, we didn't really get a lot done this stream, did we? <laughs> Spent so much time just randomly talking. Um, nevertheless, I hope you all enjoyed it anyway. If you don't currently subscribe to the channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Uh, we'll be back again with more Oxygen Not Included on Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow night, I think I'm probably going to play some more Don't Starve. Uh, the uh, the Hamlet closed beta ends on Monday, I believe. Uh, so I kind of want to get some time in on that game and uh, make sure we get a chance to play it a bit more. Uh, and then also, the uh, the Hallowed, uh, Hallowed Nights event is ongoing for Don't Starve Together, as well as the Twitch drops, and they've just updated with more Twitch drops. So I'm thinking maybe on Sunday night, I might do a stream on Twitch, uh, streaming dedicated to Twitch to play some Don't Starve Together. You can play around with that a little bit, but uh, I'll let you know once I figure out what that schedule is going to look like this weekend, because I'm not 100% what my time's going to look like. But uh, thanks, everyone, for coming to hang out tonight. I appreciate everyone who sent over to Super Chat. I'm, as always, Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.